Did you ever wonder why certain solopreneurs are always in high demand while others with comparable skill sets go unnoticed? What I discovered, especially while growing my own coaching business, is that successful solopreneurs tap into something that's kind of an open secret. And what's really cool about this is once you unlock this, marketing yourself will lose the ick factor, your imposter syndrome will start to fade, and more often than not, you will become the go-to person for your customers. That's right, I'm talking about unlocking and leveraging your brand archetype. In this video, I'll guide you through the three questions. Where do brand archetypes come from? Why brand archetypes are important to build your personal brand? And how do you find and unlock your own brand archetype? So let's get started. So when we talk about brand archetypes, we don't talk about some new age concept, but one that stems from the insightful mind of renowned psychiatrist Carl Jung. And Jung proposed the concept of the collective unconscious. You can imagine this kind of like a cloud storage for all human experiences. And within that cloud, you would find these characters or archetypes that we all just inherently know. These characters have been appearing in myths, fairy tales, and stories throughout the history of humankind. And most interestingly, they exist across countries and cultures. And here's the deal. These universal characters, they're your key to connect to your audience quickly and deeply through shared emotions and experiences. And this is what successful thought leaders, experts, and internet personalities already know and leverage. When you find your archetype, you will unlock a whole realm of stories to share with your audience. Your marketing will stop being a sales pitch and turn into a narrative that folks can connect to and most importantly, remember. Which brings me to our second question. Why are brand archetypes important when building your personal brand? There's this common misconception that you can pick your personal brand kind of like a Halloween costume. That's not really how it works though. Especially when you provide some sort of a service. If you're a coach, creative or teacher kind of type, you want to develop a brand that appeals to people who are either the same or in sync with your brand archetype. And that's because of the so-called similarity attraction paradigm. It suggests that people are more inclined to bond with others who share the same values and beliefs. So you don't want to fall into the trap of picking an archetype that just sounds cool. If you want to grow consistently and sustainably, you want to attract clients that really make you love your work. If you come to think about it, this is really about understanding who you are at your core and shedding a light on your story that's already there. So now you might be asking, okay, so what are these 12 brand archetypes or archetypes as Carl Jung would call them? Okay, let's start giving you some insight. If you are someone who is known and appreciated for their authenticity and simplicity, you might be the innocent archetype. If your friends and colleagues come to you for your insight and wisdom, you might be the sage archetype. If you're all about chasing new and exhilarating experiences, you might be the explorer archetype. If your presence disrupts the status quo and you're all about challenging norms, you might be the rebel archetype. If you are the go-to person to make things happen, if you're appreciated for your visionary thoughts, you might be the magician archetype. If your life is about overcoming challenges to maximize your potential, you might fall under the hero archetype. If you focus on passion and the appreciation for beauty, you might be the lover archetype. If you're the life of the party and your humor serves as a relief for tension, you might be the jester archetype. If you are the relatable down-to-earth gal or guy, if you're about equality and harmony, you might be the everyman or the girl next door. If you're a natural born nurturer and you're about taking care for others, you might be the caregiver archetype. If you're all about authority and influence and you enjoy taking the lead, you might be the ruler archetype. And if you're all about creating new things, pushing boundaries and following your vision, you might be the creator archetype. And this brings me to the last question. How do you reveal your brand archetype? Well, let's break it down a little. 
Your archetype isn't something you can just pluck off a shelf. It's a deep-rooted extension of your values, mission and vision. So begin asking yourself, what are the core values that guide your decisions? How do you take on challenges? Do you face them head on? Or do you seek innovative solutions? What impact do you want to make? Do you want to lead, support, guide or entertain? At the end of the day, you want to remember that your personal brand isn't only about what you do. It's also about who you are. And whatever you find along this journey, I hope I see you around on this channel. If you want to learn more about brand archetypes, make sure to check out this playlist right here. Take care and I'll catch you next time. Bye.